Hey y'all, welcome back to Reddit the Wild. Well, we've reached part two of our Elements of Handicapping series for the Belmont States class. So we're going to be looking at the pedigree of the contenders and their basic foundation to, uh, to gauge whether or not they belong in this race and if they'll be competitive. So let's take a look. Part two is class, an assessment of whether or not each contender rightly belongs in the Belmont Stakes from a competitive standpoint. An analysis of pedigree and family history in conjunction with track results will help determine their qualification for our usage. Uh, for those of you who were, were with us for the Derby and the Preakness uh, elements of handicapping, I decided to include the pedigree page uh, from Pedigree Online to give us a little better examination. And you can save this and analyze it for your own, uh, for your own sake. Uh, but very quickly, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, pedigreequery.com is a great place to find sire and dam information, female family. It's a really good resource. And uh, if you do want some uh, some added numbers like GSV and whatnot, it costs 10 bucks for a month subscription. And I always get it around Derby and uh, Belmont time for just that purpose. Um, you see Tappet Shoes is by Tappet and Awesome Flower underneath. Flower Alley is the dam sire. And uh, he's by Distorted Humor at 49. You go all the way back to Mr. Prospector. So more of a speed influence than stamina. But we're not going to worry about that because Tappet is the Belmont sire. Uh, just to give you a little breakdown of some of these numbers very quickly, you see bracketed 8H. That is the female family, which you can also find in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, all the female uh, families were numbered based upon number of stakes winners and how prominent they were. Uh, that, that importance is sort of dissipated over time uh, with the proliferation, but it does give you an idea of how prominent the families were, number one being the best. The letter designation is whenever they had an influential uh, mayor or taproot mayor, they would create uh, and a, a division of the female family based upon her roots. So everything that comes after her that she breeds and her uh, her grandchildren and so on would get the 8H designation. DP is dosage profile. I think most of us are familiar with that, but just to go over for the uninitiated, uh, you have five numbers, brilliant, intermediate, classic, solid, and professional, right across. Brilliant, intermediate are speed influences, sprinter, miler type of speed. C is classic, that's the middle number, that's for classic distances. And then you have the bottom two are solid and professional. Those are stamina influences. So you can see Tappet Shoes has a pedigree that's, uh, that's, that's pretty well influenced in intermediate speed and classic speed. Uh, and th that would be like between a mile and a mile and a half would be around where uh, the influence is strongest. To get the dosage index, you basically add up the uh, first two numbers, half the second number, and then divide it by half the second number and the, the, the bottom two numbers. So 4 and 11 is 15, and half of 12 is 6. That's 21 divided by 7, and you get 3. And that's how you get the dosage index. Center of distribution is how balanced the horse's pedigree is. One would be perfectly balanced between speed and stamina. Uh, the closer to zero, the more stamina influences there are. The, uh, the higher over one, the more speed. So, uh, of course, with a, with a center distribution under one is, is, is a good thing. It means it tends towards stamina. So this is a pretty good pedigree. The GSV is a numerical representation of how powerful the horse's pedigree is. They basically take all the chefs to race. That Those are the influential sires for five generations in a horse's pedigree. And they get a point value based upon their influence. So if you look at APND, the third damn back or third sire back, you'll see an IC by his name. That means he's an intermediate and classic influence as a chef de race. So you apply points to the intermediate and classic uh, designations. And that's how you do it. You just go through and add them all up and that's how you get the dosage profile and so on. They have not updated the chefs the race in quite some time. So those dosage index and center distribution and dosage profile, they aren't necessarily as accurate as they could be because they're, they, they haven't named any new chefs the race. Like Curlin obviously would be one of them. Tappet's likely going to be one, uh, just to give you an idea. But it is a fairly, you know, I know you guys want to see the numbers and it does give you a fair idea of what their horse's pedigree looks like. And the GSV, that's not necessarily as accurate either. You can see 
by Pulpit 49.68, AP Indy 68.1, and Seattle Slew 83.97. The older the sire is, the more the better his genetic strength value score would likely be because he has more generations from which uh, they can add points to a, uh, to the formula to come up with the number. So. Um, it's a 54.53 isn't necessarily an accurate number because they haven't updated the chefs to race, but you can compare it to the rest of the field and tap shoes. 54.53 is a pretty good number in relation to the rest of the field. All that said, I think he's going to be okay with the classic distance. Just to give you another little idea, uh, the conduit mayor profile on the bottom uses those same numbers, brilliant, intermediate, classic, solid, and professional. You tend to see more stamina influences from the dam side, which is not a surprise because that's where the class comes from. So you can see uh, if you add those numbers, uh, the, the first two speed numbers, you come up with 10. And if you add the bottom two stamina numbers, you come up with 17. So this horse tends a little bit towards stamina. So all that said, shouldn't be a problem uh, being in the classic distances. Uh, just as a, an aside, if, if those of you who want to look into it, uh, you do have the family summary. It just represents how many of the different female families are represented and how many generations. Uh, but I'll leave that to you. That's not necessarily my bag, and I, I don't want to misrepresent. Uh, anyway, if that, all that wasn't enough for you, uh, Tappet Shoes is a half to Cyberknife, who, as we remember from last year, uh, ran in the Triple Crown Trail and uh, and did pretty well classic distances as he got older. So uh, that may be an indication that maybe the best is yet to come with Tappet Shoes. He's going to get a B plus from me because I think his pedigree does qualify him for the bet the uh, Belmont. It's not an A because we haven't seen him run in graded stakes company yet at classic distances. So, um, but I think he's pretty well qualified from a pedigree standpoint. Number two is Tappet Trice, uh, though, you know, everybody's favorite for the Belmont. You know, again, he's by Tappet, the Belmont sire. We can pretty much stop there. Uh, if we look at the dosage profile, you see pretty good uh, in intermediate uh, uh, speed influence there. It's the highest, and he does have classic, and he's got a little solid, too. So uh, 392, probably not indicative. Uh, I would say that he's probably more towards a two. Uh, in dosage profile, if we looked at, at the whole thing, 53.65, he's got a good score. It's competitive with the rest of them. I don't think Tappet Trice is going to have a problem with the Belmont. I think it's going to meet him square between the eyes. Uh, you look at his conduit mayor profile, it's rather interesting, though. He has more speed influences than he does stamina, <coughs> which is, is kind of interesting. Uh, but I think based upon what we've seen from him on the track, I don't think a mile and a half is going to be an issue. I wouldn't pay that a whole lot of mind. Sometimes those numbers are wrong. He gets an A. I mean, it, he's by the Belmont sire. He's got Dunkirk underneath. Plenty of stamina to go around. I'm not worried about the distance for him. So he's, he's clearly one of the classiest in the group. Number three is Archangelo. And he's a new shooter, so we want to look a little bit. Uh, Arrogate is, uh, unfortunately, has been, uh, we've been lost to us, <clears throat> so he has a limited sample, but he was a hell of a horse in his own right, and you see he is by uh, Unbridled Song, Unbridled Fapiano, that's the uh, stamina wing of the Mr. Prospector group, Unbridled was, is a, a great, uh, was a great sire, and Unbridled Song even became a chef, chef to race for Intermediate. So uh, in, Fabiano, Intermediate Classic. So there's some stamina in the pedigree, and we know this because of the way Arrogant ran. Uh, modeling is a, uh, it, it is a nice mare, and uh, she's by Tappet. So, uh, again, there's plenty of stamina to go around. You look down at the conduit mare profile, and you see speed and stamina are pretty well balanced. Um, so I don't think this uh, – I don't think Archangelo is going to have a problem, mainly because – if you go back, modeling to teaming to better than honor, better than honor is the Belmont sire. She sired Jazzle in Rags to Riches. She is a rent of course. That's what that little asterisk means. <clears throat> that means she is considered an influential mare and a pretty damn good one. So if you needed any thought about whether or not this horse could carry, uh, could get a mile and a half, that's a pretty good indicator that the genes are there. So uh, he's, Archangelo is going to get an A minus only because uh, the you know he he hasn't gone a mile and a half yet he hasn't gone classic distance yet 
So uh, <clears throat> otherwise, he would probably get an A. And you see, uh, as I noted, the third dam is better than honor. And she's the dam of Jazzle and Rags to Riches, who won back-to-back Belmonts in 06 and 07. <clears throat> and Rags to Riches beat Curlin, by the way. So pretty darn good pedigree. Number four is National Treasure, our Preakness winner. And you see he's by Quality Road. Uh, Quality Road was, was best at a mile and an eighth. Uh, it, but, you know, they did, bringing a medallion d'oro mare to him underneath is certainly going to bulk up the stamina. So I'm not going to worry about that. I think this horse will be fine at a mile and a half. Uh, if we look at the dosage profile, you see uh, there is some stamina influence there, and uh, which is good to see. And, you know, if you do look at those numbers at 2.56, is, is a solid uh, number for <coughs> for horse at classic distances based upon what we have to look at. Uh, 55, 6, 9, that's one of the best genetic strength value scores here. So uh, th- this this horse is bred well. You can go all the way back. Uh, if you go back to the fifth generation, who do you see but Secretariat? Can't get much better than that. Uh, also, if you go back in his female family, he is a descendant of Fair Play. And, or Mahuba, rather. And Mahuba was known as Mrs. Fairplay because she only bred the Fairplay, and they sired Manowar. Pretty good stamina influence, so don't think it's going to be a problem as well. Uh, you do see a little more speed than stamina, but uh, I think this one's going to be okay at the classic distances. I'm not worried about it. Uh, National Treasure is going to get a B plus because Quality Road, you know, uh, was more of a mile and an eighth, but his his get have been doing well at classic distances. So I just just a hair of a downgrade because of that. Uh, but I think this horse belongs, and I'm not worried about the distance. Il Miracolo, uh, we love this horse, don't we? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, if you didn't ever, if you hadn't ever seen this horse run, if you looked at this horse's pedigree, you might even consider him the chalk for the Belmont. Uh, he's got gun runner on top and tap it underneath. The, that's two turn classic distance pedigree all day. If you look at his dosage profile, there's no stamina influences, but there are some classic ones. And again, that has to do with he's got a younger sire and Candy rides a younger grandsire. And uh, so that, that would ha- be the reason there aren't more influences. Uh, the the GSV is a little light for that reason, too. Uh, but if you look at the conduit mare profile, he's got more stamina uh, by almost two than he does speed. So there's plenty of stamina underneath. And, um, I, I again, I, he's another one. I don't think it's going to be a problem for him getting a mile and a half. I just don't think he's fast enough. That's the bottom line. So from a class group standpoint, he's going to get a B. Uh, I'd probably, it would be a little higher if he had shown a little more uh, in the performance department. But uh, from a pedigree standpoint, I think he'll be okay at a mile and a half. We come to Forte, uh, our favorite, at 5-2. to two. And uh, he is by Violence. Violence uh, did not race a whole lot. So it's kind of hard to know how uh, how he would be uh, and as far as classic distances go because I don't think he ever ran at them. So far, his get, I don't believe he's turned out a whole lot of classic distance uh, competitors. But he is by Medallia Doro. And if you go back all the way, you see Northern Dancer is the uh, – uh, the progenitor there. So, I mean, that, that, that's a hell of a, a pedigree. Sadler's Wells, El Prado, Medallador, they could all run all day. So I don't worry about it from that perspective. Uh, Queen Caroline, the mayor is by Blame, another one who could run all day. Arch is a great uh, distance influence. And um, going all the way back to Roberto, who was an awesome horse. Uh, if we look at, you, you look at the conduit mayor profile, it's pretty well balanced between speed and stamina. Um, but he's got a, the, the main thing is he is by uh, he is a member of the one X female family through Queen Caroline. That is the Latroy N female family. That's one of the most powerful influences from a female standpoint in thoroughbred pedigree. Uh, they often say if you don't, you know, uh, we don't have enough Latroy N, let's get some more. So, I mean, the, you can, it's the same thing with Secretariat, trying to get as much of him into your pedigree as you can. Uh, so Forte is an extremely classy horse. Now, uh, 
you know, violence does give you a little bit of a pause. Like, maybe he can't get the distance. Maybe, you know, we don't know about violence. He's going to get the distance. He's got plenty of class. He belongs in this field. I'm not worried about that. Class can overcome any potential limitations. And I frankly really don't think there are any here. So I think Forte is going to be fine. Uh, being by the 1X female family, they've got uh, classic winners uh, from head to toe. So he gets an A. Uh, so the only question we have, you know, just uh, as an aside, is the layoff more than anything else. Not worried about his pedigree, not worried about his class. Uh, Hit Show is um, number seven, and uh, he is by uh, Candy Ride. And Candy Ride was set the world record for a mile, and he was more mile, mile and an eighth type of horse. But uh, when you breed stamina to horses with that kind of speed underneath, you can usually stretch that out and they can get classic distances. And I don't think that's going to be a problem for Hit Show here. Uh, you do see he has some classic and solid stamina influences. And uh, his GSV is not bad. It's more because he has a younger sire who hasn't been around quite as long. Um, and Fabiano and Crypto Clearance, those are both stamina influences. So uh, he's got plenty of that on top. And from Tap It on the bottom. Uh, so I don't think that's going to be an issue for him at all. Uh, so I, I think he'll be okay um, as far as getting the mile and a half. Um, one thing we want to note is his dam did win the Black Eyed Susan. And if you were worried about classic distances, uh, she was stakes placed in the Alabama, which is at a mile and a quarter. Uh, and I wanted to, uh, <laughs> wanted to bring that up. So I think he's going to be okay at a mile and a half. And so he gets a B plus only because uh, Candy Ride didn't run those distances on his own. But he has produced horses like Gunrunner, so he can do it. Uh, so I think this one belongs. I'm not worried about it. Now we come to Angel of Empire. Um, you know, he really, without, if you've seen him run, you know that m classic distances aren't a problem. And the more distance he gets, the more he likes it. So, uh, but we'll look at the pedigree and we'll see. You know, he's got a dosage index of nine. And again, that has to do with. Uh, having younger sires, a younger pedigree, where perhaps the influences like Empire Maker would likely be a chef to race and they haven't named him one. So don't get nervous about a dosage index of nine or it's a CD of 120. Uh, or GS, you see the GSV is 47.57, which seems a little low. And that's mainly because, uh, again, he has a younger pedigree. If we look uh, on the dam side, he is uh, his dam is by To Honor and Serve, who was a horse who never had a problem with distance. Uh, and he's by Bernardini, who competed in the Breeders' Cup Classic, nearly won it, and uh, won the Travers. So uh, I don't think uh, – I think he's got plenty of stamina. You look at the conduit mare profile, he's got 14 for stamina, 10 for speed. So he's more attuned to, uh, to stamina. And uh, I don't think this the distance is going to be a problem for him at all. And you uh, – so – uh, we get, we're going to give Angel of Empire a B plus. Um, mainly, it, it's kind of a combination of the what we've seen him do on the track and his pedigree. Uh, he doesn't; he's not as his pedigree isn't as classy as let's say Forte or Tappet Trice, but it is it is serviceable, and I think he's it, it's enough to get him a mile and a half. So class wise, I you know, and based upon how he's run, I don't think there's any doubt he belongs in this field. So now we come to Red Route 1. Uh, you see he is uh, also a member of Female Family 8, 8D. And um, you see that uh, he's he, uh, he's another one. He's by Gunrunner and Candy Ride. So, again, those numbers are going to be a little inaccurate. Uh, the GSV of 48.42, uh, that will likely go up as uh, as he progresses along uh, and becomes a sire himself. Uh, you see the dosage index and, and the center of distribution both – both warrant uh, consideration for classic distance is not going to be a problem. Uh, Gunrunner is a sire. Tap it underneath. Shouldn't be a problem at all. And uh, I'm not going to worry about it. And you go further back, uh, three, four generations, and you see Carol's Christmas, who was a Ren de Course. And uh, she was a sire of Olympia, and I believe she was a broodmare sire of the year. So that's a pretty nice female family. And uh, we're not going to worry about that. From uh, I think Red Route 1 will be fine. Uh, so he gets a B plus as well uh, because I think his uh, pedigree, while it's not as classy yet, it probably will be the more gun runner is around. Uh, but he gets a B plus because those, those, uh, that pedigree is a mile and a half and it won't be an issue. 
<coughs> Excuse me. So if we look at this, we can do this a little differently than we have in the past. I don't think there's any horse in this field who can't get the mile and a half. I really don't. I think they all have the pedigree that will, that, uh, will allow them to get the two turns. Uh, how fast they do it, that's another story altogether. But one thing we can say is the heads of the class, the, th the three horses I believe have the classiest pedigree of the nine contestants are Forte, Tappet Trice, and Archangelo. I think they're really nice class, and uh, there, there's no doubt whatsoever, I think, for any of them, even Forte being by violence, that they're going to get the mile and a half. Uh, they're very classy, and class a lot of times can overcome uh, any potential limitations. I don't really think there are any to worry about here. I know it's a lot to digest, <laughs> particularly when you look at those pedigree pages. There's another a lot of numbers jumping out at you. But suffice it to say, I don't think we have any horses in here who can't get the mile and a half. It's really just going to be a question of how fast are they and can they be uh, can they contend for the race based upon their past performances? So we can almost eliminate pedigree to a certain degree. Uh, from our handicapping, but there it is, and it gives you an idea that if you do like a horse in particular, the chances are most of them are going to get a mile and a half. I really don't think that's going to be an issue. It's just going to be uh, running style or the shape of the race and uh, speed and past performance are really going to be the main indicators. But we have it on the record, and you've got something to take a look at. For those of you uh, who are more into pedigree, you've got something to digest, and hopefully that helps you. And if you are just have a passing interest in pedigree and want to learn more about it, well, at least you have a source and you can take a look at it. We will have part three, speed. Uh, of our elements of handicapping coming up in the very near future. So be on the lookout for that. And of course, if you do like what you see here, please like and subscribe. And we do thank you for coming by and keep those comments coming, guys. I'm loving it, what I'm hearing from you. I'm hearing some really interesting perspectives and that's what it's all about. You know, we just all listen to each other and hopefully that'll make us all more right at the wire. So I'll be talking to you in the very near future and until then, be well. Mm -hmm.